episode five and we are finally live ladies and gentlemen welcome to another week <laughs> madame producer is at fault for that one guys let me just put it out now i'm joking all right so welcome to episode five of start live the show where you get to interact with entrepreneurs upcoming entrepreneurs and all of the resources and people that support that fantastic entrepreneurship ecosystem so with us today we have <laughs> the lady who is all of atm all about the money all about the money alkaline um, spoke about her Brook life didn't know you but it no we're broke life don't agree okay not about that life. however <laughs> i've read your story so broke life was a part of it was at day, one point in time which is why you are here because we okay. were trying to find out how best we can get ourselves into the path of non-brokenness today okay. with us is none other than kenishia mays she is a financial consultant educator and financial educator strategist i'm speaking consultant into being okay yes yes I, I accept no? it i accept it accept it because that just means more what more, 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 money. more money yeah we're about that mm -hmm. all right fantastic so kenishia I did a little bit of stalking, as I'm supposed to, okay. and I know justified that stalking. justified stalking <laughs> today. So <laughs> I know that things haven't been perfect far at from, all. Far from. In fact, you're coming from the corporate space yes. and transitioning to all of this. So before we even start telling other people about what they're supposed to do, okay. tell us a little bit about you and your journey. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so my journey is pretty simple. I grew up in a household where money was always kind of tight. Mm -hmm. And I remember as a child, the only good thing that I really got from my parents regarding money was that they had this tall saving pan, this wooden thing, mm -hmm. and they put coins in it. So I saw them doing it and I thought, oh, you're just supposed to like save coins. So I started to save my coins and then I started to continue to build on that from, you know, I just save the money, save the coins, and then it got to the point in high school and beyond where I always had money, so my parents would borrow money from me to send me to school, mm -hmm. right? They'd borrow money from me to pay my little brother's school fee. I was doing my back to school when I was in grade nine upwards, right? So I've just always had money, and it became, you know, you always have money, so people are gonna ask you for it, mm -hmm. but eventually, you know, it becomes a burden. So there was this big fight that my mom and I had, and it just, I just said, you know what, this just don't even make no sense. I don't want to have money anymore because having it is a problem, right? I can't keep it because mm -hmm. somebody's going to ask me for it. Mm -hmm. So I don't have it in an account that I can look at, and I don't have it to spend on myself because somebody's getting it, mm -hmm. right? So I just decided that, mm, no, it don't make no sense. So I had all the money that I had saved up at that point, which was... What did you do with this money? I, I blew it. <laughs> I'm just go for Amazon, forever 21, I'm just go frolic. I'm just frolic. You spent all spent of your money. Everything except about 20 or 40,000. Everything. I, just, I got rid of it. And that money was supposed to send me to, to, to university, mm -hmm. right? That was supposed to be my... Because I always heard that university was expensive. But granted, I never knew anybody who went. Mm. So I never knew how much this would have really cost. So, you so I was just saving like, a lot of money because I heard how expensive it was. Mm -hmm. So I just blew pretty much out of that money. And then, you know, it just it just it is what it is. And then, of course, once you get into the cycle of spending, mm -hmm. even when the cash done, you You're still, still spending. Spend. So right. you jump for the credit card. And it introduced Ooh. credit card debt. So credit it was, card. it was, Ooh. yeah, it was, it was a, it was a hell of a journey until I eventually paid that, paid that off like 2015, the day before my birthday in 2015, I just cleared all of my credit card debt, everything. Oh, hold on. So when did you start the spending spree? The spending spree started in 2012. So you were doing three years yeah. of nonstop. Just Amazon was your best friend. Forever 21. Was some, some website I can't remember their names. Like I look at stuff and I'm like, where did this come from? Wow. Elf t t places. It just mm -hmm. I just blew the money and I don't even know I don't have a lot of stuff anymore. It's like what was it some my handbags? I used to buy handbags for like two hundred US dollars. Like to me, you know, that's so crazy. Like why yeah. would you a handbag? Yeah. Shoes for like 
too much money. It's just, it never made any sense. <laughs> you know that it's also money when you can't call it. The, you, you can't tell the price too tag. Too much money. The price too tag. Too much money. But before we continue with your story, Kenisha, just a reminder to everybody who's watching. This conversation, you can be a part of it. Feel free to send in any of your questions, any of your comments. We have our phones here for a reason, guys. So we will be watching the feed to see what you guys are saying. And of course, Kenisha yes. will be free to weigh in. So ask any questions that you need to on Facebook yes. or Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> new app. New app. Yes. Alert. New, new app. app. <laughs> yep. That's exactly what that is. <laughs> on Instagram or Facebook, guys. All right, so blew the money. Three years, you destroyed, you shelled on your bank account. Hallelujah, properly. Right. So what happened next? Well, the spending started in 2012. Mm -hmm. Debt was cleared in 2015, but I actually, you know, I started to get back on track before 2015. Mm -hmm. So in around like 2013, I was just like so broke. Like, you know, when you're broke to the point where it doesn't even make sense. Like you just, <laughs> it's like. No, like how do I explain it? It's like think about think about this like we have a doorway, right? Okay. And like Brock just come around the corner and say I just turn back and say, Girl, you again, why why are we still like this? <laughs> like it was just it, it made no sense. <sighs> Brock just tired to see me, right? Mm -hmm. And then because of that I was like, this just can't work. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I went to my mentor and I asked him, you know. I needed to teach me how to be rich. Mm -hmm. And he gave me this flash drive with like a million audiobooks and I'm like but we're step one and step two and step three and then rich. Right. Right? Because the only two things I ever wanted to be in my life mm -hmm. were rich mm -hmm. and an entrepreneur. Like there was never anything. I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was, but I just wanted to be one mm -hmm. plus rich. Mm -hmm. Right? I didn't even learn how to cook until I moved in on my own at 19 because I was so convinced I was going to be rich, mm -hmm. someone else pay somebody. A for chef. Rest. Yeah. Chef life. So when I moved in on my own and I'm like, oh, so you're not rich? So like, yeah, just like cook now. <laughs> but so I had to call my mom and be like, so mommy, all this cook. Like, I mean, <laughs> like, hope we even need flour. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. And it took me some time, right, to learn how to need flour. Like, that's crazy. So you were that wow. girl who was like constantly buying food, because of course, no? Oh, or you, or you no. were just at home, so. Everything well, was taken care of, so you didn't have to nothing. worry. No, but what, my mommy just, she cooked, she washed me, would farm, she just... She did everything. Did everything, and mm -hmm. never had to worry about these things. And she'd, get, she'd get up on the other side, so we don't want to watch Jamaica anymore. And I'm like... Okay. And then she, like, when she said that, she literally left, like, two weeks after. Wow. And then I just had to move in on my own. Like, and we went back to, to our house, I just moved in on my own, I'm like... Okay, so bills and food and exactly real life. Like, real life. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was a lot, but you know, I moved back. I moved in on my own. Tell myself how to cook and whatever because rich never happened, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We're still not reach there. You wanna reach there? Yet. Yes. So don't come asking for that loan, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> So, you know, and then, you know, in that conversation with my mentor and he gave me this audio, this thing of audiobooks, and I'm like, but this is not step one, step two, step three, rich, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that took, it took me like months mm -hmm. to actually read through these because I'm like, listen to them because I'm like, man, listen to them here for. And then eventually one day, like, when Maria realized that the broke really just don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> all right, girl. Wait, you know, it's tired. Like, mm -hmm. broke just tired to see I'm a tired to see, bro. Mm -hmm. We just nagri oil water, nagri, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, one day, one Sunday, I was there, and I remember at my house, I was just like, yo, I can't do this no more. And I started to listen to the to the audio programs, mm -hmm. and one of them I listened to was Rich Dad Poor Dad by mm -hmm. Rocky Osaki. Mm -hmm. And this man was saying something about Golden. make money work for you. I mean, I said, mm -hmm. I've never heard that phrase a day in my life. Mm -hmm. All these years of me saving, piling up money, I never knew anything about investing. It's always you working for that exactly. money. Exactly. So I was so confused when he said that, and I called him and I was like, "What does this mean?" Mm -hmm. And he was telling me, "Oh, so that's like when you buy stocks." And I'm like, "So you guys like buy stocks?" He's like, there's no special mm -hmm. club for that? No, I, because I always thought that rich people bought stocks. I never thought it was something that like, I could do. Mm -hmm. so I never had it in the frame of my, uh, frame of my mind. Mm -hmm. Then when he said, I was like, really? Mm -hmm. So the little tops of money that I had, like, remember when we blew all of the money yes. since the last one. The $200 bags, the everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I say the prices. Oh, <laughs> so, 
you know, when I had that little bit of money left and I found out that I could buy stocks, I started to call everybody research. Mm -hmm. And then in doing that, I realized, oh my God, so I have 10 grand, I just own my account. <laughs> I have that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I went and I opened the account and then I taught myself how to invest via the stock market and then I opened my retirement fund and all of this was happening when I was 21. So I started my retirement fund. Rachel looked like she didn't have none yet. We are going to fix that. Whoa. We still look there. Hey. <laughs> hey. So, retirement so, account. Yeah. Yes, girl. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I just, I did that. I started the retirement fund and then in starting the retirement fund, you know, I just kind of built up from there, and then as I was doing this, I was like, why don't we know these things? Why is that not a basic? Why is it this tough Before we even go into why, that, that is like a huge question, yes, because yes. we're educated. I, I, we know calculus, but don't know how to, you know, open our retirement account, teachers everywhere. Love them, by the way. Let a big, big up to Barney Girl J.A., who has joined us. We have Think Hard, Think Stone laughing at you. <laughs> about your chef life, <laughs> chef, your former chef life or not known I, I chef can't life? Cook, no, so mm. no, know that. <laughs> Shads Miller, sweet mischief, J A Dodger, that Roger that Dodger that. <laughs> who have joined us? Thank you guys for tuning in. Hi guys. Hey. So we're with Kenny Shia Maze. Remember, guys, you can send any questions, comments, all your niceties. You can and I'm join in. I'm looking forward to them. So please, send she them. is. She's about to see. She's about to change my life with a retirement fund. So we're that's gonna, I don't we're struggle. Gonna her, we're gonna get her financial life snatched. I'm not about to snatch her financial life, girl. Mm -hmm. we're gonna get snatched. I'm not here getting snatched. I dream. No. <laughs> all right. Cool. 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 All right. So. Let's continue where you stopped. You said you didn't learn any of these things in school. No, and it you was are... puzzling. It was very puzzling to me. And then as I was learning, I started to blog about it. I started, like, I even found out that I could have, like, a KennyShamaze.com. I had no idea that was a thing before. <laughs> so 2013 was a year when I just mm -hmm. learned, like, a whole heap of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I bought my domain name and have up my website. I'm like, Ray? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you. <laughs> so, in doing this, you know, then I started to blog about what I was learning as I was learning it. And then, you know, people started coming to me. And then I had this, this spreadsheet system. Like, people, my clients have, who worked with me over the years, like, they know the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Some of them love it. Some of them dread it. Mm -hmm. But it's the spreadsheet. I, I'll show you. Nutshell. I'll show you. When she's changing my life, she no, won't show it, me. But it, nutshell. It's every single dollar and cent earned, spent, Everything in debt, like it tra like your financial life is in a spreadsheet. Your entire financial the life. The money that I give to the window washer guy. Every okay. dollar, every cent. The bank fees, every every How do you, fee. Before, so, mm -hmm. why did you have to bring up the banks? <laughs> why did you do this, Kenny? Share continue. Mm -hmm. Right. So in shade. you know, mm -hmm. so in doing in so in doing that, you know, I basically. Yeah, you know, I was teaching people, blogging about it as I was learning, and then people come to me and I'd help them with stuff. And then, mm -hmm. you know, that just continued, that gradually grew into what became Thriving Dollars in 2015. Like when I left my corporate job, I remember I said, before I got the job, before I even got a call for the job, I said, you know what? I have to, because I was so broke. I said, I had to start, I had to get a job to stabilize mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. But after that job ended, whether it was two weeks, two months, two years, I had to start something for myself, mm -hmm. right? And even if that thing failed, it was fine, but I had to just take that chance because mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but I never actually really did it. Like, I had some small businesses and stuff when I was younger, like pedicure up on the veranda when you're 12, right. and sell sweetie at school, mm -hmm. sell phone card, mm -hmm. them, them stuff over there, right? Mm -hmm. But I never had a formal business. Right. So in doing that, in, in, starting, this, in starting this business, I just, I knew that I needed, it's something that I needed to do, it just needed to happen. So I got the job, it job lasted six months, mm -hmm. and I remember when I got the two-week notice that we weren't going to, the contract was going to be renewed, which I was so thankful for, because I was really tired of them, <laughs> I was so sick of them, mm -hmm. right? Then the Red Cross were tired of them, but we're not going to call any names. Please don't. No, we're not, we're not. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, <laughs> They're on air. Can't kick you own this mm -hmm. ownership. Right. Ownership. Yes. Yeah. Right. So in doing, so in doing this, you know, so in doing this, I, when the job, when the job ended, I remember I called my mentor mm -hmm. and I told him, and he's like, oh, what you need to do is just start sending out some application. I'm like, mm -mm. and then my friend, my coworker, I told him, and he's like, okay, so if I, you have something lined up, I'm like, mm -mm. he's like, oh, so wait, I'm like, I'm not, nothing. And then people were so confused that I would just, you know. 
that I would actually just like leave a job and not have any idea what I was going to do, but just know that it was not going to be another job. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. Mm -hmm. And then I started my first business quite by accident, but that's a whole nother story. Mm -hmm. And then in continuing, you know, that gradually, in 2015, I decided that Thriving Dogs was what I wanted to do. Came up with the name, saw the logo in my, in my head, same time. And then just coincidentally, everything just started falling into place. So Before we get into Thriving Dollars, yes. clearly it took a lot to get you where you are. Yes. No, yeah. Drive. What do you believe oh. kept you? Because broke is rough. You know what I'm saying? It's really easy to give up. It's really yeah. easy to say, you know what? I mean, I hate my boss, but... You know what it is? I've been even struggling responsibly, oh. not just struggling. Mm -hmm. So it's like I was going through all of this, but at the same time, you, I felt like it was for a purpose. It wasn't just, you never just broke and hungry because you didn't just broke and hungry. Mm -hmm. You didn't broke and hungry because you had tried to start a business and reach the same other business yet where you actually generate enough cash. Right. You know, you're just, it, there was always a purpose to the struggle. Mm -hmm. You never just, always you're just that frolic in that pot. Right. You no. Know? Mm -hmm. Boy. Struggle with a purpose. That's the first struggle time I'm hearing that one. But struggle, struggle responsibly, not drink, but struggle, guys. Mm -hmm. That that is that's actually really really profound. Cause a lot of times we just we think, all right, well, broke is broke is broke is broke is broke. No. But I guess if you're working towards something, then it makes a major major difference, and that's fantastic, Kenisha. Yes. All right. So before we even get into current day, cause I know thriving dollars is your baby. You're running. You have all these tips. You have yes. you're changing people's lives. What lesson did you learn from, you know, just having that savings plan at home? Listen, it was, I didn't even realize the foundation that that gave me, like you just put coins into this thing and then funny enough, I actually learned how to properly count with mm -hmm. money. Ah. Because when we had the saving plan in the mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. my mom's friend lived with us at the time mm -hmm. and like every single, like every, I think it was every other day or every day, like I'd empty it and I'd count the money that was there. Mm -hmm. And then she'd say, how much was in there yesterday? Mm -hmm. And I'd tell her and then I had to do the addition and subtraction to figure out what was added, what was taken out, right? It, it's so weird, but you didn't even think that was like a real foundation. Mm -hmm. But just having that thing that like even now I don't spend coins, I'd always put my coins away. Mm -hmm. And I've just accumulate like thousands of dollars just like randomly saving. just emptying your purse so do you yes. have like a methodology like I, i've heard of the 50 dollar challenge i, do I don't that. know anybody you do the 50 dollar challenge that. and you know it's so crazy i i had no idea this was a thing mm -hmm. but i started to do it a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and then i realized that people were telling me about it. i'm like wait people know all this and people mm -hmm. do this mm -hmm. but yeah so i did it and actually got it from there's a five dollar challenge in the u.s oh right so that was i was like five dollar but we can't just save every five hundred dollar like come that, on that's, that's not much right that's right. not practical mm -hmm. and every hundred dollar like you know what hundred dollar you get per day so i'm like mm -hmm. yes yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I thought fifty dollar would have been the next best thing so i don't i don't spend any fifty dollar i don't spend any coins and then every six months into those I have a specific account mm -hmm. I just put that money into and it's so effortless and it, it, I even when I, I had an event the other day last week and I believe and this young man came up to me mm -hmm. and he told me that his family doesn't know for his brother and they got like $25,000 that's just $50 I'm, I'm just $50 every single that's month that's crazy Wow. They just put, they don't spend the $50, they, they put them away and then when they call them, it's like $25,000. Wow. And it's within a few months. Well, guys, for some of you who don't know what the $50 challenge yes. is, it's, it's, it's exactly as Kanisha just said. Every single $50 that you get, coins, um, paper money, instead of spending it, you take it and you set it set it aside somewhere. Yes. And normally it's like taking it out of your wallet or your purse or wherever it is every single day and just forgetting that it exists yes yeah much. it adds up it adds it up so that is up. one really straightforward tip remember guys you can ask questions welcome 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 Ra Ra Reezy hey I see that way from there tiny toes seven eight thank you for tuning in we have Kenzie plug in plug in oh we have Kenzie who oh has God. just joined us as okay. well. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember questions, comments, whatever. You can ask me, you can ask Kenisha, you can even share your own experiences with money because we would love to hear about that. Yes. So Kenisha is bringing us up to date. We've got one practical tip so far in terms of what you can do. $50 Simple $50 challenge. Points. Tracking money. I I feel like... I've got enough for that. I have an app for that too as well. Let's talk about, about practically 
tracking your money. Okay. Because a lot of times people just, myself, you just blow through cash and you're like, where did my money go? So how important is tracking and how can we track? Um, I have a personal system that I use. I can't share it with everybody because it's quite complicated. It requires one-on-one -on -one walkthrough. Mm -hmm. But just create... Consultants. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just create like an Excel spreadsheet. And mm -hmm. in this Excel spreadsheet, you're pretty much just outlining all of whatever income that you earn. So think of it as a, a, maybe like three columns. Start with three. So you have the income section. Then you have the expenditure section, and then you have like an, an account section. So this is going to be your wallet, your bank account, and the different bank accounts, you name them, you list them. So for the income section, so you're going to separate your income by income earned, income received, and then portfolio income. So this is any kind of return on your investment. So this is money that you're generating from whatever accounts, whatever investment um, instruments that you have. So this is the portfolio income. Okay, one more thing. Make money, right? has a question. The producer has a question. Right? Mm -hmm. What if I don't want to create a, an Excel spreadsheet? What other? Do you have any apps that you'd recommend? You know what? I've heard. I've heard. I personally don't use any of them. Rachel has one. <laughs> Let it. I have an app on my phone called Money Lover, okay. and what it does. I have an Android. Are oh, you sheep? <laughs> I don't know. Kind of like you live in. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure we will not go there. This is not the show for that. We're talking about money. Anyways, so I have an app called Money Lover. Okay. It, the icon is actually a little green pig. And essentially, it allows you to do exactly what you've said. You can track you can track how much you've spent, where you've spent it, what account okay. it's come from, who you spent it when you were with them, just in case you have a friend. I love who, that. Whenever you're with them, you're like you're blowing that money. money first away. Yes, spending trigger. exactly. Who you've spent it um, around, and then even where. So it does a geographical map. So if you spend some money, it'll ask you, did you spend some money here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hold happen? on, that's free? That's free in the It Android. is 100% free. It. It is, of course, there are premium um, add-ons yeah, and stuff like that. Expensive. Exactly, but it's it's complete. It's a hundred percent worth it, and um, it even has this nice little feature where, for example, if you're traveling, you can, and this means traveling out of town, maybe on a special trip, mm -hmm. you can actually track the money for that particular. So much fan, we has it, and we have another question from Dodger that on Instagram. He's asking, is saving in U.S. dollars the way to go? Not, not quite. Um. We, lo we love to think of um, saving in U.S. dollars because of the stability of the U.S. dollar, mm -hmm. but I'll tell you the real truth. When it comes to even instruments like the, the local stock exchange, Jamaica stock exchange, like the returns that you get there, you can't really get that nowhere else. Like if we're being completely real, in terms of even growth companies, so you, start at a, you start at a $2 stock, Right, I mean that goes up to like sixteen dollar. Like those kind of returns, you're not gonna get that by holding U.S. currency. You just don't get that. U.S. currency is basically just to have the money and just to have it stable. That's pretty much. That's all that that is. It's not necessarily for you to be generating any kind of wealth, any kind of return. It's just I need to have this money and I need this money to kind of be inflation proof. That's what holding U.S. currency is. Mm. Don't you that? You got that? Okay, so you can save in in. Save in U.S. to maintain the value of your dollar, but definitely invest in no, Jamaica. Save in U.S. You want to, in, you want to, like you said, invest. In, right, invest in the local market. Jamaica. Yeah, it's worth it. Yep. So you know, not everything foreign is good, guys. We have some we fantastic have some options here. Yeah, we have some fantastic yes. options. I love that you've said segued us into investment. Yeah, I think. Topic. Yeah. Oh, your favorite topic. She just lit up when we talked about <laughs> investment. Investment sometimes is a terrifying topic for a lot of people. I think a lot of us are interested in it, mm -hmm. but we're afraid because we don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So, as somebody who has never maybe considered invested, investing but has never ever actually invested, mm -hmm. what is my first stop? Where do I start? All right, when we're talking about investing, we're talking about a wide range of things. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about stocks, we're talking about bonds, we're talking about unit trust, like there are so many different instruments. But let's say, let's say we're talking about unit trust. So you want to get into the stock market, but you don't want 
to directly get into the stock market. So what you can do is to buy a, a stock-based unit trust. So essentially what happens is that you and I have some money, we're putting that money in a specific fund, mm -hmm. then the professionals mm -hmm. at whichever institution, they're taking that money, they're investing it, and then the returns are paid back into the funds and then it's it's and share. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's say you bought, you have, and it's called a unit trust for a reason, so you have 5,000 units, I have 3,000 units. Mm -hmm. So the returns that are paid back into the fund match my 5,000 units. units. Exactly. And, and okay. then, right. So this is a way, so you're buying stocks, but you're not buying it directly on the stock market. And this is, this is an excellent way to start out. Um, it's almost risk-free, and I say almost because... Risks are a part of every exactly. investment. It's a part, mm -hmm. But it's a way for you to kind of get into the market without taking on the full risk of being into the market. Okay. All right, we have a quick question from Melissa K562. Right. She's asking if someone in the U.S. wants to invest in Jamaica, what documents do they need? And does the person have to come to Jamaica in person? No. No, Melissa. You don't, you don't need to. But for anybody in the U.S. who wants to invest locally, you have the option to do so. In terms of the documents that you need, those vary across institutions. But some of the standard ones, so if you're in the U.S., you need to send your social, um, and all of these have to be um, notarized, all of these. So you're going to need your proof of identification, your social security number. Some of them are going to require that you provide proof of income. So this is going to be whatever um, proof of income that you get from your employer. So give exactly contract, um, a salary slip, whatever it is that you get, right? And then you're also going to need to provide a proof of address. So this has to be in your name. So it can be a credit card bill, a utility bill. And bear in mind, like I said, all of these have to be notarized. And then there are certain um, opening documents that you're going to need. So what you can do, if you know which institution you want to invest with, you're going to call them and have them email those documents to you. Then you're going to complete them. You're going to have those notarized. You're going to create, you're going to have copies of your other documents, so the SSN, the ID, you're going to have those notarized as well and then you send those back and what you need to do is that you're going to have, so you're going to need to have somebody on the ground for you who can go into a JMMB, a Sajikor, a Mayberry and open the account for you, right? So you, because you're already going to be signing whatever it is that you need to have signed, right? And you're going to have everything notarized. So it's just a matter of having that person on the ground who can go into the, into the institution and actually complete the process for you. But it's complete. It's your account. Your, their name doesn't have to be on it. It's your account. It's just a point person, you know, some feet on the ground. So, yeah. So you can invest in Jamaica. You can, even though you're overseas, you can invest locally. You just need to follow the procedures pretty much. All right. I think Melissa gave us a thumbs up. I think she has understand clearly understood clearly what she wanted to learn what about she wanted stock, JA stocks well okay. i think that she needs it's to the same thing it's yeah the same thing you for the stock market you're going to need to open a brokerage account so that's the difference it's not just an investment account it's specifically a brokerage account so this is what you're going to be buying and selling the stocks through or if you want to do the unit trust like i said earlier so you're going to ask these companies about their stock based unit trust so those are the two options, Melissa. And and Melissa, listen, feel free to reach out to Kenishia. She can walk you through the process. That's what she's Slide here for. Slide in my DMs, girl. <laughs> Slide in her DMs real quick, real quick. Fantastic. All right, so we're going to do a quick little one word. When I'm going to say one oh, word. God. And then oh, I want <laughs> you to associate it. Tell us the first thing that comes to your oh, mind. I hate these, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a trick question, girl. I'm just sliding with a handbag and then you know where we're going. But Amazon. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so let's start with that. Let's start with that. Um, you know, shopping. I'm supposed to give you one word? No, give me what comes to mind when I give you the one word. All right, when it comes to shopping, I think about shopping responsibly. So okay. it's not just, so I have a system. And I have a system for everything. I'm that person, right? <laughs> yeah. So my system is my Visa debit card. I don't have a credit card anymore. My Visa debit card, 100%, has to have no money on it. Like, it has to be, have no money. And I'm not exaggerating. Gary looks quite confused. No, let me explain. explain. No, let me explain. Because if I have money on it, listen. That sales comes through in the email real quick. So, <laughs> so what I do is that I do have money, just not on the on the, the card that I can purchase things online. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do, if I really want something, 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to transfer from one bank to the next, then convert it over into US dollars. All oh, of this is at two business days. And wow. then if I still want it at that time, then I'll purchase it. If not, I'm like, mm, no, I can't do it without it. So that's, I have a system for that. Okay. All right. Well, I wanted to develop on that a little bit, but I'm going okay. to ask you the second word. Um, and I think the second word for you is going to be back. Um, Your face says it all. <laughs> I just thought about um, fees. You, not even fees. You keep them for transaction accounts, but I, I don't like hearing people say that they, they're saving in a bank account. You don't save in a bank account. Why? Because that's what everybody does, right? Savings well, account. When you want to save, a saving account is really a transaction account. Um, mm -hmm. When you want to save, you're, you have to put your money where you're going to get the most returns. Mm -hmm. You're not getting that in a savings account. If anything, you're losing money because one inflation, two fees. I mean, you're not coming out ahead, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to invest, you have to invest in investment accounts, a unit trust, um, stock market, bonds, if you, mm, mm -hmm. bonds can work. Mm -hmm. Right, so these are investment accounts that retirement fund you as young people. I know we don't think about it. Get your retirement fund, get you one. You can start one with as little as a thousand Jamaican dollars. Thank you later. <laughs> All right, welcome to Jamo Infract and Empress Shani. Thank you guys for joining us. All right, so he said we did shopping, we did bank. Hmm, I feel like the last one should be relationship oh you know what are, what kind of relationships are we talking Thank whichever you. one you know <laughs> so the cheeky face yes. Mm. Yes, yes um relationships are incredibly important you need to have people around you intimately socially who believe in you who push you to do better like and i just tr treasure your relationships like actually spend time with people that you care about like not what's up them are ask what one like show up on them work with and like good girl walk on, right? <laughs> have that face-to-face -face conversation. So let people know that you're there, you care about them. Like my friends know I show, I show up for my friends, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you say, Ken, I'm having an event, I'm like, all right, girl, tell me the date and the time. And I'm there, and if you want me to help you out the floor before everybody come, I'm that friend, mm -hmm. right? So my people, my people know that I'm always there for them. So just treasure your relationship, show up for your people them, and make your people them know. So like, it's, we always think that people are supposed to know so we care, but mm -hmm. we don't actually tell them. Mm -hmm. Tell your people that you care and show them that you care. So treasure your relationship by showing up for your people, checking on people, find out what's happening. Go beyond the surface. And and that doesn't cost you very much, does it? No. And Probably it, like a little bus fare. Yeah. Little gas. Yeah. And show my people. Nothing that. at all. Practically nothing at all. Alright, so what I want to be Shauna K wanted me to elaborate on something. Shauna K, what do you want? The last Can point. Share? The last point. With yeah. banking with and it not being a, a good way to say it. Right, because um you're not you're not earning you're not earning anything. So you're not even keeping up with inflation. Think about when you have a bank account, right? They typically will offer you something like zero point one percent, one percent, something crazy. Hey, right? God. So let's say you're getting a zero point one percent or let's say you're getting a one percent. Alright, let me let me talk about inflation in real and nominal terms. I'm gonna go look a bit at econ but I'm gonna go break it down. Right? So when it comes to inflation, we have a real inflation, we have a nominal inflation, there are, well, interest rates in general, right? So let's say you hear, well, let me use the interest rate. So let's say you hear that the, the bank tells you, oh, you know what, we're paying you 1% on this account, right? That's the nominal interest rate. That means that it just, it's not real. So the real, infl the real interest rate is going to be, so inflation is 3%, mm -hmm. this bank is paying me 1%, 1%, right? So my real return, my real, real, real return is negative 2%, mm -hmm. right? So you're just not keeping up, you're not keeping up with inflation, like your money needs to at least be on pace with inflation, and our inflation is typically anywhere between 6 Well, it hasn't been that, that high in a while, but let's say it's, it's like 5 6%, like your money needs to at minimum be earning 5 6%, and you don't get that at a bank. At so you need bank. to put that in a brokerage account or somewhere where you can generate at least enough money to keep up with inflation. So that's what I meant by, by that. We have Melissa coming back about other ways to save, but Melissa, in the interest of time, we're gonna have some, we're gonna have you follow leave up. us some okay. tips, okay. some follow up. It sounds like you guys want Kenishia back. <laughs> if you want Kenishia back, let us know, you know, we can we got the plug. Thumbs up in the comments for Kanisha to come back, guys. Pressure her. I'll be back. I'll pressure, come back if she wants to be back. So pressure, pressure. Pressure me, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
you mentioned retirement and yes. I think that that is a great space um, at which we can sort of start to wrap right. up. Most important thing to consider whenever we are considering retirement. Um, the most important thing I want us to consider is literally just get started. Get started. That's mm -hmm. the first part. I mean, in terms of how much you should be saving, that comes later. Mm -hmm. But right now, we typically, because the, when we are it, the last time I checked the statistics on retirement, let's say about 4% of the workforce had retirement funds. 4%? And that's crazy. Wow. Right. It's crazy because we're, we have to think about something long term. So mm -hmm. there are two things to consider when it comes to retirement. One, incentive that it provides. The government is incentivizing you to start your retirement fund. If you don't have one with a company, you can start one for yourself, mm -hmm. right? So if your company doesn't offer you that as a benefit, mm -hmm. you go to a JMMB, a Sajik, or like pretty much any institution that you can think of. And you say, I want to have an individual retirement account, right? I want to have a private retirement account. So you're going to open this account and you're going to put some money in there. Now the incentive is that the government allows you to put 20% of your gross income. Ooh. So this reduces your, your, your taxable income. Wow. Because, exactly. So when you have, mm -hmm. when you're, you're putting away this money, like for free, it's for free, right? So in putting away this money, the government, they basically are telling you, look here, I want you to fend for yourself later because if your hand is in your own pocket, mm -hmm. you won't stretch it out to me. Right. Right. And so that's incentive. NIS and it's, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's the incentive. So they're providing you with a benefit where you don't need to come to them later. Mm -hmm. Right. So just think about that. 20% or up to 20% of your gross income for free. Like it's free money. It's and then if you that have a company later. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a company who provides a match, Amazing. hello. Hello. That is double free money. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Right? So I just want us to get started and just think a, a lot more about retirement. Think about and it, the other thing that I wanted to mention, the benefit also is that when it comes to retirement fund, is if you do not have, like say for example, you don't get to retirement because you know life happens and death. Mm -hmm. So if you die before you get there, the money is paid out to your beneficiary. So you set those and it serves almost like a life insurance. You, you know funerals are expensive and night nights and all of these things. Kenisha, it feels like 45 minutes has absolutely just blown has it been 45 past. Minutes? It, it has, has started. Yes, like it has minutes. been 45 minutes. Okay. And guys, it looks like we have not even touched the surface because right now we haven't even gotten into the whole business of, oh, of, of money management as an entrepreneur. We've talked about personal finances, which is great, yeah. especially for people who are preparing themselves to become entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like Kanisha needs to come back. So as mentioned before, guys, if you loved <laughs> what you heard today and you really want her to come back, to share some more information. We have our technical guy over here going to call you, <laughs> right? Um, feel free to comment and let us know and we will definitely have her back if she can find some time for us, can you share? I will. All right, will. fantastic. So thank you guys so much for tuning into episode thank five. You so much. Thank you for Kenisha Mays, a fantastic Pleasure. founder of Thriving Dollars. Tell us how we can find you real quick. Uh, Thriving Dollars is everywhere, so Instagram at Thriving Dollars, website thrivingdollars.com, mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, it's Thriving Dollars everywhere, right? Okay. All right, Thriving Dollars anywhere, so you can look out for her guys and reach out to her, she'll be yes. happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much for tuning in, I'm not a singer, but, <laughs> wow. Alright, but maybe, you know, when I get rich, when you help me get rich, I won't have to sing for myself, just like you weren't planning to cook for yourself. <laughs> yeah, so that is the goal. So thank you so much, guys. See you guys in another, not next week, but the week after that. Two weeks. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>